This slide deck is divided into two videos. In the first, we walk through the collisional population dynamics on the left, and in the second video, we walk through a more traditional form of game theory in order to explain how the models on the left and right are connected. This will allow us to explain why the mathematical modeling described on the left is often referred to using the name evolutionary game theory. Consider a test tube filled with cells. Some of the cells are orange or copper colored, while the other cells are blue or denim colored. The cells are stirred vigorously to maintain the proportion of copper to denim cells as uniformly as possible throughout the test tube. On occasion, a copper cell might undergo a birth, meaning a duplication or so-called replication event. We notate this event using a chemical reaction equation indicating that one copper cell becomes two copper cells in a reaction with rate coefficient F0. The number of such reactions that have proceeded since a reference time is RC. On occasion, one copper cell and one denim cell might collide in a fashion that triggers the denim cell to duplicate. This event is notated using a chemical reaction equation indicating that one copper cell and one denim cell become one copper cell and two denim cells with rate coefficient t over bracket n. Bracket n is the number density of cells piled at the bottom of the test tube. Supposing that the cells pack tightly and are incompressible, the density bracket n is a constant throughout the cell population. We are treating t as a constant coefficient, and this means that t over bracket n is also a constant coefficient. The number of these reactions that have occurred since a reference time is rt. We have illustrated merely two of the reactions that might proceed in this model. Here are others. On occasion, a denim cell might duplicate on its own. In this model, we assign this reaction the same rate coefficient as for the analogous reaction in which a copper cell duplicates by itself. On occasion, a collision between a copper cell and a denim cell might trigger a copper cell to duplicate. For this reaction, we name the rate coefficient S over bracket N. Sometimes the result of a collision between two copper cells will be the duplication of one of the copper cells, and for this reaction, we use the rate coefficient R over bracket N. Finally, the collision of two denim cells might occasionally trigger one of the colliding denim cells to duplicate. The rate coefficient for this reaction is called P over bracket N. How does the population of cells change owing to all of these reactions? The time rate of change of the copper population is owing in part to reactions of type C, owing in part to reactions of type R, and owing in part to reactions of type S. The partial change of the copper population owing to a reaction of type C is a gain of one copper cell. The law of mass action instructs us to calculate the time rate for this kind of reaction using the rate coefficient F0 and one power of the population of copper cells C. Similarly, the partial change in the copper population owing to a reaction of type R is also a gain of one copper cell. Because this kind of reaction involves a collision between two copper cells, the law of mass action leads us to write two powers of C. Remember that we defined the rate coefficient for this kind of reaction with a bracket n in a denominator. Placing one of the powers of C in a pair of density brackets makes the units work out. The partial change in the copper population owing to a reaction of type S is again an increase of 1. Because this reaction involves a collision between a copper cell and a denim cell, the law of mass action guides us to write down a power of D and a power of C, here with the power of D placed within density brackets to make the units work out. To clean up this expression, factor out the common power of C, and relabel ratios of population densities as population fractions or population proportions. In other words, relabel bracket C over bracket N as PC and bracket D over bracket N as PD. The time rate of change of the copper population depends in part on how many copper cells are available in the tube to do anything, and depends in part on the demographic composition of the cells surrounding each copper cell. DCDT depends on C as well as the quantity in parentheses, which depends on the demographic composition of the cells with which each copper cell is likely to collide.
The time rate of change of the denim population is owing in part to reactions of type D, owing in part to reactions of type T, and owing in part to reactions of type P. The partial change in the denim population owing to a reaction of type D is a gain of one denim cell. The law of mass action prescribes a product of the rate coefficient F0 and 1 power of D. The partial change in the denim population owing to a reaction of type T is also an increase of 1, and the law of mass action prescribes 1 power each of C and D. This is because a reaction of type T involves a collision between a copper cell and a denim cell. Finally, the partial change in the denim population owing to a reaction of type P is also an increase of 1. The law of mass action prescribes two powers of D because this kind of reaction involves a collision between two denim cells. Factoring out a common power of D and renaming ratios of population densities brings the equation for the time rate of change of the denim population into a format to the right, similar to the format that we used at the left to express the time rate of change of the copper population. The time rate of change of the denim population depends, in part, on how many denim cells are in the test tube, and it depends, in part, on the demographic composition of the cells surrounding each denim cell, meaning the cells with which each denim cell might collide. Now that we have described the model at a microscopic level and expressed the model in terms of time rates of change of the copper and denim populations, we can study how the two cell subpopulations vary over time. To do this, we will study how the population proportions, meaning population fractions, of the copper and denim cells change over time. How does the cellular composition change with time? We will study the dynamics of PD, the fraction of the population that is denim. PD is the ratio of the denim population to the combined total of the copper and denim populations. To take a time derivative of PD, we recognize that we can differentiate D over C plus D using the quotient rule. We write derivative of top times bottom minus top times derivative of bottom over bottom squared. The quantity C plus D appears in two places in the numerator, once as a multiplicative factor and once inside a time derivative. Cancel out the two copies of D times the time derivative of D. The remaining terms can be re-expressed using the time derivatives at the top of the page. The time derivative for C at the top of the page ends up over here, and the time derivative for D ends up over here. Grouping powers of C and D upstairs with powers of C plus D downstairs allows us to re-express the equation in terms of PC and PD rather than as a messy combination of PC, PD, C, and D. Derive an equation for the time rate of change of the copper population fraction PC and confirm that the sum of the time rates of change of the two population fractions equals zero. This is expected because the population fractions PC and PD add up to one. There are no other cell types in this model. We can re-express the equation for the time derivative of PD in terms of PD alone rather than in terms of PC and PD together. PC is the portion of the population that remains after the portion PD has been removed. In other words, PC is 1 minus PD. Blue boxes indicate terms that were already expressed as PD in the line above, and orange boxes highlight terms that were previously expressed as PC. When the population contains only copper cells and no denim cells, PD equals zero. This multiplicative factor out front thus equals zero, meaning that the entire time derivative of PD is zero. The horizontal quivers moving from left to right indicate that the population composition remains steady. The population remains composed purely of copper cells. When instead the population contains only denim cells and no copper cells, PD equals 1, so that this factor, 1 minus PD, now equals 0. Again, the time derivative of PD is 0, and the horizontal quivers indicate a steady population composition. The population remains composed purely of denim cells. For a population that contains both copper and denim cells, PD has a value between 0 and 1. In this case, all of these terms are positive. 
to study this model further consider the collection of situations where t is greater than r is greater than p is greater than s this means that the differences t minus r and p minus s are both positive so that the entire quantity in the square brackets is positive corresponding to upward pointing quivers in the direction field when pd is nearly zero this factor is almost zero and the time derivative of pd is also nearly zero corresponding to a very shallow arrow when pd is nearly one this factor is almost zero the time derivative of pd is nearly zero again corresponding to a very shallow arrow the arrows are particularly shallow very close to pd equals zero or very close to pd equals one Trajectories starting from between 0 and 1 get drawn in toward the steady state at which PD equals 1. The steady state at the top is stable, while the steady state at the bottom is unstable. A heterogeneous mixture of copper and denim cells becomes increasingly enriched in denim cells over time. It is customary to label the factors in parentheses, so-called fitnesses. We regard the fitnesses as variable rate coefficients describing the average efficiencies with which a copper cell, or alternatively a denim cell, increases in number with time. The purpose of this slide is to compare fitnesses of the two subpopulations with each other, as well as to understand how each subpopulation's fitness varies with the demographic composition of the population overall. First, we compare the fitness of the copper subpopulation to the fitness of the denim subpopulation. Both fitnesses include a coefficient attached to PC. Because T is greater than R, the product TPC in the fitness of the denim cells is larger than the product RPC in the fitness of the copper cells. Both fitnesses also include a coefficient attached to PD. Because P is greater than S, the product PPD in the fitness of the denim cells is larger than the product SPD in the fitness of the copper cells. Together, the statements T is greater than R and P is greater than S imply that the fitness of the denim cells is greater than the fitness of the copper cells. Thus, it makes sense that a heterogeneous mixture of copper and denim cells becomes increasingly enriched in denim cells over time. Now that we have compared the fitness of the copper cells to the fitness of the denim cells, we will study how each fitness varies with the demographic composition of the population of cells in the test tube. In the fitness for the denim cells, pay attention to the term with T and to the term with P. If the population is enriched in copper cells, PC is relatively large and we are emphasizing T. If instead the population is enriched in denim cells, PD is relatively large and we are emphasizing P. We have been considering the situation in which T is greater than P. This means that the fitness of the denim cells is greater when T is emphasized, meaning when the population is copper rich, than when P is emphasized, meaning when the population is denim rich. In the same way, look in the fitness for copper cells at the term with R and at the term with S. If the population is enriched in copper cells, PC is relatively large and we are emphasizing R. If instead the population is enriched in denim cells, PD is relatively large and we are emphasizing S. We have been considering the situation in which R is greater than S. This means that the fitness of the copper cells is greater when R is emphasized, meaning when the population is copper rich, than when S is emphasized, meaning when the population is denim rich. For both copper and denim populations, fitness is higher when the population is copper enriched than when the population is denim enriched. Even though the population is becoming enriched in its fittest subpopulation, meaning the denim cells, the fitness of each subpopulation is decreasing. The fittest cells prevail, reducing everyone's fitness, including their own. Using the figures at the left, we have just introduced a model in which the time rate of change of the population composition depends on how often cells of different types collide with each other. The word evolution is used to describe a change in the proportions of different genetic alleles over time. 
the word evolution might also in a perhaps less often encountered sense be used to describe a change in proportions of both genetically distinguished and otherwise distinguished cell types over time thus the model we have been describing can be regarded as a model in which we obtain insight into evolutionary dynamics by considering cell-cell collisions it would be natural to use the labels collisional population dynamics or evolutionary dynamics involving interactions in the next video we describe a more traditional form of game theory so that we can explain why the modeling we have just walked through is often labeled using the phrase evolutionary game theory